Hello, I'm here today to talk a little bit about the maltreatment rules, which is a focus and priority for Hockey Eastern Ontario, as well as Hockey Canada this season. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about what maltreatment is and focus specifically on the gross misconduct rule that is being uh, applied and how it is being applied this season. This video is primarily for players, parents, team officials and coaches to help them better understand the rule and how it is being applied this season in Hockey Eastern Ontario, as well as Hockey Canada at large. OK, so for this season, Maltreatment has been made a rule priority and focus for Hockey Canada. So what is maltreatment? It consists of acts that result in actual or the potential of physical or psychological harm. This includes, but is not limited to, physical, psychological, or sexual actions as detailed below. Physical, meaning assault or unwanted physical contact, or even non-contact behavior such as denying hydration or nutrition, providing alcohol to a participant under legal age, etc. Psychological maltreatment, which includes verbal assaults or attacks, unwanted physical contact, or denying attention or support, and sexual maltreatment, which includes unwanted contact of a sexual nature on any part of a person's body, showing sexual videos or images, or unwanted conversations or teasing of a sexual nature. Why are we focusing on maltreatment? Well, Hockey Canada, like Hockey Eastern Ontario, believes that every person should have a positive experience in hockey. And while it is easy for us to say that discrimination, harassment, and abuse have no place in our game, we all have a role to play in making that a reality. That includes all our participants, including players and team officials, as well as our officials both on and off the ice. We must all expect more from our participants, our teammates, and ourselves. There is no excuse for this type of behavior in our game. Hockey Canada's commitment. We know that maltreatment in all of its forms is a serious issue that undermines the health, well-being, performance, and security of everyone associated with the game of hockey. Ultimately, maltreatment is incompatible with the core values that lie at the heart of Canadian sport, and all participants in Hockey Canada's programming should have a reasonable expectation that it'll be an environment that is accessible, inclusive, and free from all forms of harassment and maltreatment. The responsibility of team officials. Team officials shall always be responsible for their own conduct as well as that of their players. They must endeavor to prevent disorderly conduct before, during, or after a game, on or off the ice, and at any place in the rink. The referee has an obligation to assess penalties to any team official for failure to do so. We will also report the individual by completing a game incident report, including full details, and submitting the report to the appropriate member or league delegate. So under a section 11 now, there's 11.1 for unsportsmanlike conduct, 11.2 for disrespectful, abusive, and harassing behavior. 11.3 covers spitting. 11.4 is discrimination. And 11.5 is physical harassment of officials. So 11.1 on sportsmanlike conduct refers to consistently challenging and disputing the calls of an official. For that, a player or team official can be assessed a minor penalty, a misconduct penalty, or a game misconduct penalty based on the determination of the official, the context of the game, as well as the type of behavior exhibited. Where there seems to be some confusion is the difference between disrespectful, abusive, and harassing behavior for 11.2 and 11.4, which falls under discrimination. For the rest of this video, I'm gonna focus specifically on discrimination and outline the penalties that have been assessed and will continue to be assessed under this rule. So what is discrimination? The primary focus of these changes is related to discriminatory language and actions in hockey. Eliminating discrimination from the game is part of an official's responsibility to prevent maltreatment. This rule pertains to both incidents that are witnessed by an official as well as, as, well as incidents that are reported to an official by a participant. So the discrimination rule specifically states that any player, goaltender, or team official who engages in verbal taunts, insults, or intimidation based on discriminatory grounds shall be assessed a gross misconduct penalty. Discriminatory grounds include the following without limitation. 
race, national or ethnic origin, skin color or language spoken, religion, faith or beliefs, age, sex, sexual orientation or gender identity and expression, marital or familial status, genetic characteristics and disability. The referee will report any incidences that occur in a game by, repeating, by completing a game incident report, including full details and submitting the report to the appropriate member or league delegate. If there's an incident that occurs on the ice that is not witnessed by an official uh, and is reported to the referee, the referee shall report the individual to the appropriate member, member of each team's bench staff. The referee shall then complete a game incident report, including full details, and shall submit the report to the appropriate member or league delegate. So in events where the official did not witness the behavior, they will confer with their lines persons. If none of the officials on the ice um, heard the, the comment made or the behavior exhibited, then there will be no penalty assessed on the ice. However, the officials will be required to advise the team official on both benches of what was stated and will complete a game incident report for follow-up by the league um, or the branch after the game has occurred. With respect to section 11.4, I think all of our participants, players, coaches, parents, spectators, understand that comments about race, religion, xenophobia, or homophobia are considered discriminatory actions that will not be tolerated and will be penalized with gross misconduct penalties. Where there still seems to be some confusion is around comments around sex and gender, which in the past have not been called as gross misconduct penalties, and in some cases have not been called at all. This has been changed under Canada's Hockey Canada's rule emphasis for this season. These comments are now considered discriminatory and will be penalized with gross misconduct penalties. So what I'm gonna do now is show you some of the words on the screen that have been used by some players this season in Hockey Eastern Ontario and have been assessed gross misconduct penalties by officials. It should be noted that these penalties have been upheld by the Hockey Eastern Ontario Discipline Committee. So I will warn you before showing you these terms that some people may find these offensive. Here is a copy of the list. These words are often used towards women in a demeaning, discriminatory, and intimidating way. In the context of male hockey, these terms are often used towards other male players as a way to be emasculating, intimidating, and demeaning as well. For this reason, it is considered discriminatory language and will be called as gross misconduct penalties. We occasionally get asked if there is a list that exists of these discriminatory words. There isn't any. The fact is, is that officials are advised to use their best judgment, and if a gross misconduct penalty is warranted, it should be assessed. The best advice that I can give to players and team officials is to not use trash talk at all, because these words will now be assessed as gross misconduct penalties, misconduct penalties, or game misconduct penalties. I think we can all agree that this type of language doesn't belong in the game. And the fact is, is that we all have a role to play in helping to get rid of it. Hockey is meant to be a fun, positive experience for all of our participants, and we want to make it as inclusive as we can for everyone. One way we can do that is we can collectively work together to get rid of this type of trash talk in the game. So I would encourage team officials to talk to their players about this type of uh, behavior parents to talk to their kids about why this behavior is unacceptable, and for players when your teammates are using this language to talk to them as well about why this behavior is unacceptable. If you have any questions about anything that we discussed in this video today, please do not hesitate to reach out to your association president, your local referee in chief, or you can contact me at the email address below. As I said at the beginning, we all have a role to play in making hockey an inclusive, fun experience for all of our participants. But in order to do that, we need everyone to participate. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was informative and enjoy the rest of your day.